You're about to experience one of the seven wonders of the sea. A wonder of nature that is so rare, scientists still struggle to understand its origin. Gaze upon the beautiful ray that seems to fly through the sea on wings. What if you could harness its grace and beauty and share it with others? Now, look upon one of the ocean's most feared and mysterious creatures with a tail so powerful it can reach speeds of 30 miles an hour in seconds. What if you could harness all that power? Imagine what it would be like to combine the strength and power of a shark with the graceful beauty of a ray. Well, imagine no more. And instead, gaze upon one of the seven wonders of the sea and one of the world's most rare and majestic of creatures, cousin to both shark and ray, the shark ray. Now, meet the people who brought her to you. Oh, welcome, welcome. Uh, hi there, everybody. Uh, hello, uh, my name's Brandon. Whoa, oh, uh, uh, sorry, folks. I uh, I just got off the research vessel and I still have my sea legs. Uh, I uh, I have to tell you, folks. Uh, all those months at sea can really mess with your equilibrium when you get back on land. Uh, being on a vessel that is continually rocking back and forth with the motion of the ocean, uh, you have to get your sea legs quickly. Now that I'm back on land, my legs are still trying to adjust. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Let me tell you folks how we first encountered the shark ray. We were in the Indo-Pacific Ocean. Oh. Now, it took us a lot longer than that to reach this part of the world. And now you know why my legs are so shaky. That's a lot of ocean to cover. Uh, now, the Indo-Pacific is the crossroads of Asia and the Pacific. It is a wondrous place and very complex ecosystem made up of thousands of beautiful islands. And in the midst of these beautiful islands, you find the... Oh, the sea turtle. <laughs> oh, oh, and the coral. Oh, I love the coral. Oh, oh, and the lionfish. Beautiful and deadly lionfish. Sorry, uh, sorry folks, I, uh, I get a little lost in that magical world under the sea. Uh, but there is a wealth of maritime creatures that are endemic to this region and this region alone, meaning they are only found in these waters. Whoa, whoa, hey, these sea legs are coming in handy. I couldn't dance at all before. <laughs> her discovery. Oh, uh, here we go, folks. Uh, all the way back to Kentucky. Uh, uh, <laughs> I love science and technology, folks. Isn't it the coolest? Uh, now, back in 2005, the Newport Aquarium broke ground and introduced the first shark ray ever seen in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, when she first came to us, she was a mere 40 pounds and 4 feet in length. Uh, a very rare creature with very little known in 2007, we broke ground again and introduced a second shark ray to the exhibit. Uh, now, we were the first institution to bring the Western world a male and a female shark ray. Uh, they are better known here amongst the Newport Aquarium family as Sweepy and Scooter, and pioneered their research with a dedicated biologist right here at the Newport Aquarium. Uh, now, how many of you folks have been to the aquarium before? Oh, we got a few hands. All right, uh, how many of you are first timers? That should be everybody else. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Uh, we are glad to have you too. Uh, now, shortly after Scooter was introduced, we also acquired Sunshine. There she is. Uh, she joined us, and we were able to gather invaluable data as we watched, studied, and worked with these amazing animals. Uh, but, as any good scientist knows, using the scientific method, Knowledge is only gained from continuing research and continuing to push boundaries uh, from seeking knowledge and processing data. Uh, that's why we here at the Newport Aquarium, in our ongoing efforts to learn more about shark rays, are proud to introduce you to the newest member of the family, Spider. 
mind. Uh, once again, ladies and gentlemen, we have more of these amazing creatures on display here than anywhere else in the world. And I have a special treat for you today. How would you like to meet one of our shark rays? Yeah? How would you like to meet one of the seven wonders of the sea? Well, here we go, folks! Ta-da! Uh, well, uh, that's not one of the seven wonders of the sea. Uh, that's Diagor Erica. He is one of the seven wonders' best friends, though. Isn't that right, Eric? That's right. that we 
as humans are target trained? Uh, how so? How are we target trained? It's true. Uh, how about it, folks? Uh, did you know that we're target trained? Uh, well, uh, let me break it down for you. Uh, excuse me, uh, sir, may I have your name, please? Dalton? All right, Dalton. J just go with me on this, all right, bud? All right. <laughs> now, uh, Dalton, uh, say you're walking down the sidewalk. It's about 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, a few hours after lunch, and you start getting that rumbly feeling in your tummy. It's time for a snack, Dalton. And in front of you, you see the most beautiful vending machine you've ever seen. And inside's your favorite food or maybe a nice cold Pepsi. What would you do, Dalton? That's right, you buy it. You take some change out of your pocket, or maybe ask mom for some change. You pop it in that machine, you'd select your target, uh, and you'd get your treat. See, folks, we're target trained. Well, I guess that's happened for me from a very early age. I don't know if my wet suit is trained, so I'm pretty good at that target training. Maybe too good, actually. Um, now, Eric, I, I've been looking at all these different sharks swimming around in there, and they all look pretty different. Uh, like the same tiger sharks. They've got these sharp, pointy teeth. Are the shark gray's teeth just as sharp? Actually, surprisingly not. The shark gray teeth, is that the same with our own molars in the back of our jaws? And what that allows them to do, I don't know if you've seen the bodies, their mouths are under underneath their heads, and that allows them to hunt the ocean floor looking for crustacean and lobsters. And when they find one that they want to eat, they put it down with their bodies, suck it up into their mouths, and crush it with their powerful jaws. Well, now I know why we use target training with these guys. Uh, uh, but Eric, are there any other reasons we might use target training? Well, actually there is. It's pretty exciting here at the New York Aquarium. We're hoping that uh, Sweet Pea and Scooter might be going to hook up and have little baby shark rings. Oh, can you imagine that, folks? Uh, one of the seven wonders of the sea reproducing right here at the Newport Aquarium. Uh, it's never happened anywhere else in the world. We would be the first. Um, Shark Ray research. 
but we take the preservation of these amazing animals very seriously. Uh, now, Eric, would it be all right if my friends out here asked you a few questions? Absolutely. Well, such a stuff that I have to have this from time to time. <laughs>
plastic bags that we get from the grocery store. And with that, I have very little to do with them, but everything goes to the ocean. And those plastic bags in the ocean, they look like jellyfish. And they kind of uh, billow in the, in the water, and sea turtles will come up and eat those, and it will actually clog up their digestive system, and unfortunately, they will die. So if we can take little measures like that, I think it would be helpful. That's right, folks. Uh, everyone is able to help out. Uh, it could be as simple as shutting off the water while brushing your teeth or even turning out the light when you leave a room. Uh, no one is too big or too small to lend a hand. Uh, speaking of lending a hand, let's give a big round of applause for Diver Eric and our safety diver Mark. Thank <laughs> you.